Okay, I am currently sitting in our cold garage in our van because it's the only quiet place to talk nowadays. Um, so it has currently been 16 days with our sibling group of foster kids and they are seven and a half year old girl, two and a half year old girl and their five month old brother. And I meant to sit down and do like the first week of foster care video and like that is like all I was gonna talk about and I actually <laughs> sat down and I filmed day nine. I didn't even have time to write anything out and I was just a jumbled mess. Plus, I went to review the footage yesterday to edit and I had lipstick on my teeth. It's been crazy and it's gonna be cold out here so I might use one of their blankets that we now have to wrap myself up because uh, my life now just is like everything kid and it's it has been great and it's been wonderful um but we're also just both exhausted and recently found out that we both have covid on top of everything i had a hard time watching myself i knew you'd have a hard time watching me so i just decided you know what let's actually like take notes get organized so i can tell you what these last two weeks have been like the first week was really 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 rough it was so nice that when the kids came it was actually um right after christmas before new year's and because it was winter break peter was able to take time off of work and his clients didn't miss him too much so that was so valuable those first like you know five six days he was right there with me we were doing it together it was non-stop go and it was so nice that that is when they happened to come. So they happened to come on a Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And we had got the call when we were um, on the way back from Minnesota that Monday. And we had just enough time in the evening to run to Walmart, get a basket full of things, and try and get to sleep as fast as we could to get one last full night's of sleep. Uh, we didn't get to sleep till midnight, but it was our last night of uninterrupted sleeps. So that was super nice. I'm so glad that they did come in the morning um, because that gave us a whole day to really um, bond with them, just to play with them. And like I said, it was just all hands on deck right away. So they pulled up in two different vehicles. I went up to one car first and it had the youngest two in it. And I went then to see the oldest and she was super nervous and she was looking down and like, you know, kind of whimpering which totally makes sense. I mean, coming to a new place, I mean, I'd be scared too, not knowing what to expect. Right there next to her was this giant, giant stuffed Norwal. And I said, oh, is that a Norwal? And she perked up, she looked at me, and she goes, yeah, it's the unicorn of the sea. And I said, yeah, you know, unicorns, they're not real, but Norwals are. And she goes, yeah. So it was, such a, like an instant connection. So she came inside with us. Um, I was really focused on just the kids and the caseworkers and Peter kind of brought in all of their things. They actually came with quite a bit, uh, which was really surprising. I think because they had just come from another foster placement and it was right around Christmas that they got a lot of stuff um, from that family and also their parents had also given them a lot of things for Christmas. So they came with a lot so it was kind of just all in the living room and i was like we will worry about this later we went up to the loft which we have now converted from peter's office to a play area and peter's office got moved to our bedroom he wasn't too thrilled about working in the same place that he sleeps but it actually has worked uh, really really well because it's kind of tucked away from the rest of the house and so it's pretty quiet um there for him to work and so in the playroom, we went right away. Um, I was holding the baby on my lap and I started playing with the two girls. And we started playing Princess Candyland, which we had just bought the previous day at Goodwill. And it was so cool because the oldest, she said, 
Candyland is my favorite game. And she had never played the princess version before, and she loves Disney princesses. So it was just a really great um, instant connection. And then Peter comes up, and he's just watching. And then the caseworker comes in and asks to talk to one of us, um, pulled aside. So Peter goes with her while I stay with the kids. Um, he uh, gets kind of the down low about how long they think this placement is going to be. Obviously, the goal of foster care is reunification with the families. And 70% of the time that is able to happen. Um, the other 30% of the time, then they are you know, eligible for adoption. But the majority of the time, they are able to go back to their families. So that is what we're working towards. Um, and we were told that it's going to be a 6 to 12 month placement. Uh, who knows? Um, I, you know, that's what we were told. So that's kind of the information that we have been um, going off of. So um, then Peter comes back and um, the caseworker comes back and she says bye. And that was really, really hard for the kids because they had bonded um, with this caseworker already. And then to have the only familiar face leave and then be left with these strangers. There was some whimpering, um, not like full on tears, just hugs. They gave her hugs and um, then she left. I was sitting on the floor this whole time. And then as soon as she left, I realized that my lap was very, very warm. And I looked down and here, um, Bubba, the baby, that's why I affectionately call him, uh, he has gone all over me. And so his diaper exploded, he had leaked through his outfit, and it was all in my lap. And so it was just like, okay, here we go. Welcome to this crazy adventure. Um, so that first day was really a blur. Um, after that, um, I didn't know like when the kids were going to nap and I kind of just let them guide themselves. Like when they got exhausted, like then they were sleeping. So finally the baby, it's not in the afternoon started, you know, rubbing his eyes. So I put him down. He slept, I think for like two hours. That was a really good nap. And I could tell the little one, she was also exhausted, but she would refuse to sleep in her bed. So eventually she fell asleep on the Norwal, which was in the living room. And she slept for about an hour just on the Norwal. And while she was asleep, the oldest and I, we ended up making a welcome cake. It was an idea that I had seen on Instagram. And I really liked that because it just was something fun that we could do together. She was talking about how her dad likes to bake and it was just something fun that we could do. And so I had already um, had the ingredients on hand. It was really simple. She insisted on adding bananas to the cake. And so we sliced a slice of bananas and added it. Those first two days, we were very, very lenient. And we kind of just let them make the choices that they wanted to do. So for example, I would never put banana on my cake. I thought it was disgusting. I did not want to add it, but I was like, okay, yeah, sure. We'll add banana to our cake. You know, cause I realized I can pick off the pieces of banana. It's not that big a deal. And we also have really, really enjoyed um, Love and Logic, which is a parenting book. And that has really, really helped um, when we are doing choice questions. So I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I'll come back and explain um, the first night, which was super rough, but, uh, by like day three, we started kind of setting in like boundaries and things like that. Like, um, we are going to wait until everyone's at the table to eat and we are going to clean up our toys after we play before we put on to new things. So you can imagine the first two days, it was quite chaotic. Our goal those couple, first couple of days was really just to let them know that they are loved, let them know that they are safe. And it really seemed um, to work. So night one, that's when it got rough because, um, I mean, that's when the emotions set in and we really didn't like rush bedtime. We ended up having a popcorn and movie night and then I was up in um, Bubba's room giving him a bottle and the little one, she was coming up and she was wailing. <sighs> mama, mama, come back. Mama, where are you? Come back, mama, please. So she was having a meltdown on the stairs. Uh, so Peter, he attended to her while I was giving Bubba his bottle. And then um, I hear the oldest say, we're just here because of a paycheck. 
this girl is seven and a half and so she's only been in the system for like two weeks at this point and so for her to like already have these ideas and like it was just where did she get this from so we calmly the Lord's kindness gave us so much grace and patience those first couple of days um, and we looked at her and we said that is not why you are here you are here because we love you and we just want to give you a safe place while your parents do everything that they need to do and she didn't really accept the answer but she didn't really fight back either so that was that so then the baby he was not tired yet so i was trying to get the girls down so i went with the girls um, and then Peter, he took the baby to calm him down. So it was finally 10.30 by the time we had finished story time and all of that, um, that we finally were settled, settled down with the girls. Um, the little one, she basically cried herself to sleep. I held her and then I left. The baby ended up finally going to sleep in his bed at 11.30. And then Peter and I did not have baby monitors set up yet, so we slept on the couch. So it was about 1.30 and little girl starts wailing, mommy, mommy. So I come up and I hold her. I um, lay with her down in bed and I'm scratching her back, rubbing her back, um, giving her hugs snuggles she is a snuggle bug and it's just the cutest so um, she finally calms down and I decided I want her to learn to sleep on her own so I'm gonna leave and go back down with Peter and then it was about an hour later she starts crying again so I go back up again um, and holding her at this point um, Bubba needs his bottle so Peter goes up gets his bottle um, we kind of tag teamed his bottle so I like left baby girl went and helped um, baby boy with his um, bottle and then she started crying again. So then I went in and held her um, from 3.30 on until 8.45. And so I just ended up sleeping there because she was exhausted and I was exhausted and I don't wanna keep going up and down the stairs. So um, thankfully the first night it was over and we you know, passed that and then we were on to day two. And we really just like played the first two days. We played outside a little bit. This will come into the story later. We had been told that they had been exposed at their previous foster home with COVID. So we had to um, kind of just, you know, monitor everything. So we didn't want to like get together with people until we kind of knew, but we still were going to Walmart because we had to just get so many more things. We realized we need this, we need that. Um, Peter, I think day two went to Walmart. He bought a uh, formula because we were pretty much out of the formula that um, Bubba had come with and he bought lots of other things. And that first week, anytime Peter went to Walmart, he was like, I can't get out of that store without spending like $200. So it was crazy. We were racking up so much things. Um, we realized we needed tubs for organizing their art supplies. Um, thankfully, we had a lot of awesome friends too who supplied us with baby stuff because we weren't really expecting a baby. But I tell you what, Bubba is the happiest little guy. He brings us so much joy. I'm so thankful for him. Um, but we did have to get quite a bit of uh, supplies for babies. Oh goodness, I feel like I need to look at my notes because I feel like I'm going off track. And I'm even only on day two. Trust me, it'll speed up here in a little bit. Like I said, those first couple days were just a little bit crazy. So by day two, um, the oldest, A, she was really loving all that we got to do. We get to, got to play so many games. We just played game after game. We colored. We really were giving each one of them a lot of attention and she really started to open up, which was really cool to see, especially because the previous foster family had described her as a tear. And we had really, really um, prayed over her as soon as we found that out. And then when she was here, we were praying. We had so many friends and family praying. And so it was really cool to see by day two, she said, I want to stay here forever. And in her mind, it also meant her parents came and lived here as well. But it was just so sweet to hear 
really that she felt safe here and that she really, really was starting to thrive. And so that was seen early on, which just was just really amazing. Also, we've had people bring us meals and that was the first day, day two, that someone brought us a meal. And it's been so great. The kids are such great eaters and we're on a really good schedule now with eating. But at that point, it was kind of like whatever they ate, they ate and we would give them dessert even if they didn't finish all their meal. So, and we were doing dessert at lunch and dinner because that's what they were wanting. And I was kind of like at that point, anything you eat is great. Um, and so, like I said, those first two days, we were very, very lenient. Uh, we were filled with a lot of grace. And like I said, like the Holy Spirit was just making me so calm, um, very understanding. My normal tendency would be like, no, you have to eat all your food before you have dessert. But like, it was just... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. So night two, we decided to go and look at some Christmas lights. So we actually walked around our neighborhood for a little bit. Um, and then we got in the car and it was like a 45 minutes getting everyone in the car. It was a mess. We finally get everyone in, buckled, figure out the car seats. And we take off and go look at some Christmas lights. And we thought it would be like a super like fun time for them, but it kind of seemed to bring up um, emotions. Uh, it sounds like that is something that they have done in the past with their family and so especially for the oldest she just kind of seemed to really get quiet um I could tell that she really wasn't enjoying herself that much so we get home um we start story time and it was finally I think 9 30 when the girls went down and about 10 30 when Bubba went down and Peter and I again slept on the couch and was up a couple of times throughout the night um to um comfort little one and also Bubba. 